Can everyone kind of sort of hear Mary? Okay. Can everyone hear Mary? Okay, as good as we can. Okay, Mary, everyone can hear you. Good. Good. So, so I'm gonna go are ahead. Are we ready to begin? We are. Mary is from Lake Superior State University. And because Mother Nature decided to act a little crazy during April, <laughs> um, she was unable to be with us physically, but through tech, the joy of technology, we were able to hook up with her um, via Prezi and speakerphone. So Mary, go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Great. Well, thank you for allowing me to do this, uh, especially since uh, we did get this big storm. And, um, Uh, 
Turn up the volume down there. Yeah, that's what I'm playing with here. It's based by organizations and distributed disciplines at a time of information overload. The Massive Open Online course is a response to the challenges faced by organizations and distributed disciplines at a time of information overload. It used to be that when you wanted to know about something, you could do a few things. You could ask someone, you could buy a book, you could try to figure it out for yourself, or you could call a school. If that school offered the course and the thing you were trying to figure out, you could go there and take it. You could get access to information about a topic. An instructor would comb through journals and books to pull the information together from a library. You might even find others who are also interested in the same things that you are. The MOOC is built for a world where information is everywhere, where a social network obsessed with the same thing that you are is a click away, a digital world. A world where an internet connection gives you access to a staggering amount of information. 
This video will introduce you to how a massive open online course is one way of learning in a networked world. A MOOC is a course, it's open, it's participatory, it's distributed, and it supports lifelong networked learning. In one sense, a massive open online course is just that, it's a course. It has facilitators, course materials, it has a start and end date, it has participants. But a MOOC is not a school. It's not just an online course. It's a way to connect and collaborate while developing digital skills. It's a way of engaging in the learning process that engages what it means to be a student. It is, maybe most importantly, an event around which people who care about a topic can get together and work and talk about it in a structured way. So the course is open. All of the work gets done in areas accessible for people to read and reflect and comment on. The course is open in the sense that you can go ahead and take the course without paying for it. You might pay to get the credit through an institution, but you're not paying for participating in the course. It's also open in the sense that the work done in the course is shared between all the people taking it. The material put together by the facilitators, the work done by the participants, it's all negotiated in the open. You get to keep your work and everybody else gets to learn from it. The course is participatory. You really become part of the course by engaging with other people's work. Participants are not asked to complete specific assignments, but rather to engage with the material with each other and with other material they may find on the web. You make connections between ideas and between you and other people. You network. One of the outcomes that people get from the course are the network connections they built up through engaging with each other. The course is distributed. And all these blog posts, the discussion posts, video responses, articles, tweets, and tags all knit together to create a networked course. They're mostly not found in one central location, but rather all over the internet, in different pockets and clusters. There's no right way to do the course, no single path from the first week to the last. This allows for new ideas to develop and for different points of views to coexist. It also means that one of the side effects of a MOOC is the building of a distributed knowledge base on the net. The course is a step on the road to lifelong learning. MOOCs promote independence among learners and encourages participants to work in their own spaces and to create authentic networks that they can easily maintain after the course finishes. A MOOC can promote the kind of network creation that lifelong learning is all about. The course part is just the beginning. And how can you go about finding one of these? Well, news that a MOOC will be offered usually spreads on online networks. People who have reputations for interesting skills or innovative thinking on a topic decide to collaborate by offering an open online course covering that topic. Anyone who wants to join in can. In a MOOC, you can choose what you do, how you participate, and only you can tell, in the end, if you've been successful, just like real life. <laughs> I just that, uh, I thought I had a lot of good information. There was one part about not having any homework, and I have not found that to be the case, so. Um, in fact, I'm doing a logic course right now, and I'm behind on my homework, but that's a different story. But anyway, are we ready to continue on? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 All right. So, right now there's the big three. And the big three are Chris, Sarah, and Alex, and you'd ask me. You guys can use Coursera, um, those are ones that were developed by Stanford University. They were um, some professors that got together and did those. And then edX is more Harvard, MIT, and Berkeley. But right now, those are the, the, the major players uh, in, the, in the MOOC game. And I put up here, the Coursera's mission statement, just to give you an idea of what they are looking at. They are looking at a future where the top universities are educating not only thousands of students, but millions. The key word is here, top universities. They are looking at, uh, you know, you're looking at the University of Michigan, Ohio State, University of Wisconsin are, are the closest ones, but we've got uh, you know, the Harvard, the, the all the, all the big players, the Ivy League, top elite universities are really getting in there and really trying to make their names known. And so what they're looking at is they're, they're, they're trying to show their stuff. They're trying to be the best of the best and, and providing this information. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the top 
the terminology of group participants, that they are still right now that, that they talk about the workers, the draft them, the task of the dancers. Workers are the ones who uh, sign up for the course, they look it over, they see what kind of information is available to them, they look at the syllabus, we kind of view it, and then they just drop right off. Um, usually within the first week, the drop in, they pop in from time to time just to see what's going on. Um, if there's new any, any new information that's been presented in the, the week. Half the participants are the ones who will do some of the coursework, and, and they may even keep it up until a week or two before. Usually these courses are about five to six weeks. I think the longest course that I have seen was an eight-week course, but they're usually about five to six weeks. The active participants will participate throughout the whole course. They earn the certificate of, of completion. I'm going to show you this, uh, this pattern. There aren't any specific numbers, but this is what they're seeing for the workers, the drafters, and the cast and the actors. And if you look at the very bottom, the active, um, that's about a 10 percent of the students actually finish and complete a group a certificate of completion. So it, it starts off really strong and then it just dwindles down to a few. Now, if you do take a course and you work and you decide that, that you just don't have the time to do it, which I have done, I, I admit I am a worker and I have done that before. You can always take that course again. In fact, they encourage you, if it's not ready for you then, you can always just not complete the course and pick it up at a later time. So I'm going to go over my work experience, which started out in February when I had um, found out about groups and I thought, well, what kind of course are we taking? And I found this one, which I thought would be perfect. For me, a fundamental of online education, and I'm not sure if anybody else has signed up for this with me or, or knows the, the background behind this, but um, I ended up getting an email similar to this one, and all, all of a sudden, this was like right before the course was starting that, that they could not do it. And um, inside higher ed, really. Um, course there was an online course about an online course and uh, the how it has passed and, and the university and the instructor were not available for comment. So right now I'm on the waiting list and I hope to take that uh, course hopefully within the next year and uh, be able to uh, report back to you on that also. So then I got to where, okay, I, I need to have a, a new course. I, I want to figure out what this is all about. So I ended up, um, I ended up signing up for this developing innovative ideas for new companies, which was offered by the Maryland Technological Enterprise Institute, the University of uh, Maryland. And I just wanted to put this in. This was an email that we had gotten. And I wanted to give you the demographics. There are 85,000 students in this one class. And the countries who participated just in the letter B, was just amazing. 75 years old was the common age for, for, these, um, for the students. But it very much ranged from the teenagers to retirees. The male female mix I thought was kind of interesting, 16 of the 39. And um, it was just it was really interesting to, to, to see the discussion boards with all of these students and, and all of these different mindsets. So um, that really made it interesting. This is my statement of accomplishment. This is what you receive when you complete it. Um, there was uh, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of an interesting um, which I'll get to in a couple of slides here, but uh, one of the things we had talked about was Kickstarter, and um, Kickstarter is, is, is actually quite a, a neat, innovative idea that I had never heard about. And what, what people do is they put their ideas out there, and then they ask for backers, and um, to try to get 
with Kickstarter, and then have a student uh, send it up. So I was able to follow that. So I really like that part. Um, this is another website that we have gone to at ePlus, and uh, this is a little bit about what I do not like about the course. Um, we went in and we, we critiqued a business plan, and then our peers graded it, and we were allowed to give a two or one or a zero. The two or one for was exceptional content. This, this, this critique was great. Number one was a basic content. If they just had the basic information for a critique, then you gave number one. And if they didn't have anything that was applicable, you gave them a zero. So, um, and I found that was giving it on for, for a peer to peer. I was just as guilty as everybody else. I get my critique back, and I had like a 12 or a 13. And what had happened is, is that if you gave somebody all two, they got 100%. If you gave them all one, they got 50%. And if they got zero, then they got 0%. So even though they were doing basic work, you were still failing them. And so um, I always thought that I wasn't going to go into the accomplishments because I critiqued, because my critique came back at below 70%, and that's what you needed for the course. So the next one, I really had to step up. You know, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of complaints on the discussion board about that. But um, all of that, I ended up doing the certificate of accomplishment. But what I liked about the uh, MOOCs was, First of all, the independent learning. You have to really develop your discipline and your motivation to keep on track because you know, it's a week by week and there are deadlines and there are um, penalties if you don't meet those deadlines and you have to keep up with it. What I really liked about it was the network learning. That's where I, I think you learn the most about, uh, uh, you learn the most about with the peer-to-peer -peer interaction. And they use discussion boards, Facebook pages, and the study group uh, for the project, which I have used a little bit more the discussion boards and the Facebook page and then the study group. But again, I'm still new at this, I'm still learning. And when you think about all the social media that is out there, it puts us all on the same playing field. The youth are neutral, with the, with the students all over the world, we're all using this stuff. And although I, I wouldn't advocate using the, the, the MMO or the social gamers for, for MOOCs, but there's a lot of good discussions out there that you can use. Uh, social network, microblogging, like you, there's all these different tools that can be used in MOOCs that you can, you can go out there and you can experiment with and you can see what works and what doesn't. So I really like that aspect of of the MOOCs. So now I'm going to go into a little bit about the, um, the applying it to an SI model. Now I know that I'll get our students who is an independent learner, and what we would like to see as SI is in how we would uh, develop those skills and, and uh, work with the students. And the first thing is being responsible for their own learning. Teaching them um, how to set achievable goals, motivating them to learn, how to deal with procrastination. Those are some very important skills that SI can really hone in on. Another one is know your resources. Or managing your time by identifying what is important to your study and understanding how you are adapt. And then reflecting on your learning. How did you develop those uh, abilities to, to reflect on your progress, record how you were developing your skills, uh, know what feedback you need from tutors, and by readers and peers, and how to use that. So, the one 
you sign up for a class, you get a, a lot of price that is specifically for your own body session. And the online readers can post any kind of information they want. They can use the calendar to post their SI sessions. Um, any ads, uh, you know, the, the, the information of how to get a hold of them, emails um, that they can email their student right in the So in this OTA site, um, we have really looked at how to set them up differently and how to use the, um, the MOOC strategies to set up these OTAs. Um, the first one is the discussion board. One of the new classes had a really great Q&A. It was a, a live walk where the professor was and discussed um, the top two questions that were asked of him and how he would answer them or how he wanted to see a direction. And sometimes he wouldn't even answer them directly. He would just give you little hints of how you should go about it. And then set up discussion boards on the top two questions and have those students work through those problems themselves. And that, I thought, would be a great way of, of keeping an SI session going throughout the week is posting the top two sessions that were in the SI session and having the students pick a way at it, look at it, dissect it, work at it, so then they can really understand it. Another one is um, creating wikis in our blackboard. And um, I, came, I came across this and I thought that this was just wonderful. In Coursera, they have a list of courses that have all the wikis. You know, so if a wiki has a course, you can access any and all their wikis. And there's just a, um, well, as many as I could get on my screenshot, of the courses that are currently available. And um, Chris Rabat was going to uh, co-present with me. He is my chemistry SR reader. And he and I talked about this and we went and got the chemistry concept and development or concept development and application, and we put them into a MOOC wiki. And here's the first part of the MOOC wiki, and then you know, here's the second part. And there is a lot of good resources in there that the students have right at their disposal. I do want to comment that at the very bottom, you'll see from Coursera.org for the chemistry concept. I just have to put that in there, and I encourage everybody to to reference the wiki so then you know where you got that information. And uh, I encourage my students whenever they update their wikis to always do that so you're not random on where you got it. But uh, we had and we looked at some of these, um, oh, the interactive periodic table, that was pretty interesting. There's some really good um, resources in here that uh, it's all right there. It's, it's, it's all free and it's all available for you. So we also talked about our study guides that we post down there, and I keep telling them lots of more, lots of more. And uh, some students, they just, they, they want to, to hold hand a little bit too much. And so we talked about uh, even using our study guides to refer to what is in our wikis, what is in our resources. So then, we can guide them to it. Here's a great site. Did you know that this was out here in the wiki? So then they're going to have to uh, be more responsible for their own learning. Social networking. Um, I really, like I said, I really like the peer to peer conversations. And this, um, this is something that we are going to be talking more about at our issue to develop the peer-to-peer -peer networking and um, using them outside of class to keep them motivated in the class and to keep them going. And uh, it's not something that, that we have really focused in on, but I'm looking forward to starting that up next fall and uh, reporting back to you on that at the next bit by conference. So, I want to, and uh, Monica, are there more than one person in there? Yes. <laughs> yes, there is, Mary. Oh, okay, great, because I wanted to do a thing to share. Just a quick activity about some of the things that I have talked about and um, you know, what you liked about it, what you um, maybe had a question about, or if you just 
wanted to share something to put on a piece of paper I'd like to share in a, uh, a book experience or something. Or however it be, but um, you know, when I say pairs, you can have more than two people in your group. But I'd like to just take a few minutes now for, for everybody to get together and to, um, to talk about their experience or, or um, what they had a question on or what they thought was a good idea. Um, so we can about, I don't know, what do you think, five, ten minutes for that? Perfect. And then we'll come back and you can read the responses, Monica? Yes, that would be great. Does that sound good? Yes. So we'll come back at 2.20. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Thanks. Okay. All right. Okay, so I heard her say any MOOC experiences that you've had or any questions that you have um, in regards to her presentation. So if you want to go ahead and pair up and do a think pair and then we'll share in about 10 minutes. So that may, that may be thing that's across the aisle. <laughs> There's a lot of static. I mean, I don't know what it would be nice if they had a I saw that one thing pop up and it's so cool and that cursing and stuff like that and I randomly saw games on it and I'm like, how the hell is the game to fucking do? I saw a pogo. Oh, it's power. It's like you can't see it. 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 Also, like, the intro to the direction of the team here. I really wanted to have it click on that. Should have put a place to our next floor with a big one. I don't know. 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 Go on. We take a I don't have a Twitter. I have Facebook that I randomly get on. Maybe once because a month. <laughs> I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked, Maybe once a month. I asked, 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 I
They post a question, and it's almost like a challenge, but it looks a lot more fun. Yeah. You can play around and just like fight all these things, and then you actually show up. Yeah, it's like it's also like Gen Ed, but a little, a lot more fun. Right. I know like they did it like based off of our music, like some aspects. I guess it's not like that. Yeah. 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 You know, that's one of our main. Um, really, that's why it's always so warm in the house. Until like half more than halfway through. Yeah. And after that, it's like a perfect temperature where everybody wants to sleep. Yeah. 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 My hair has a nicely red tint to it, and so I was sort of seeing my brown hair on the water, so I was just like, put the sun to sun, so it comes out with the sun, though, and so I'm just like, let's put it to the rain That's how that one came about. I had my little I was like, 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 I was